Moero Pro Yaku is a special game. And not just because it brings us our second yearly baseball game series. It was a hit on the scale that we haven't seen in a while, and over 1.3 million copies were sold on the first day. Total sales wound up being about 1.5 million copies. That made it the 12th best-selling Famicom game, but that's also quite a drop-off from day one. And the reason for that is those 1.3 million people got home, opened up their copies of Moreiro Pro Yaku, and discovered one of the buggiest messes ever released. It was so bad that Jalico put a piece of paper in the box explaining the bugs. The note reads, The rules have been changed slightly from baseball to make the game more interesting. You might be going, I don't remember a lot of bugs when I played Bases Loaded. And that's because the US got a later release with most of these bugs fixed. There is a bug fixed version in Japan as well, the black cart variation of Moreo Pro Yaku was made from shells intended for Yokai Club, and that's the revision that often has corrected code on it. Let's start with the positives here. Moreo Pro Yaku is a good looking game. The behind the picture view is intended to replicate television broadcasts, and you get uniform details like numbers on the players, there's different body types. The memory mapper Jalico used for this game also had an enhanced sound channel, and that meant they had some pretty good speech synthesis in here. Of course, when they were using that digitized sound channel for crowd noises, they couldn't also play the umpire calls, and Jalico also explained that on the slip of paper they put in the box. Oreo Pro Yaku also used real player names. They didn't use real stats, and we'll get to that in a second, but all of the names are accurate. Compare that to Family Stadium, which used accurate stats, but tweaked the names slightly. Jalico received complaints from Japan's Baseball League for this, so that was also something changed in later revisions of the cart. And the slip of paper tells you that the players in the game are not intended to be actual people. There were a lot of lies on that slip of paper. One of the more mundane complaints about Moreo Pro Yaku is that the stats are all weird. All of the pitchers are abnormally bad, all of the batters are abnormally good. There's multiple players with over 400 batting average, and very few players with under 300. On the pitcher's side, almost nobody has an ERA below 3. Considering how action-based the game is, it doesn't really affect things much, but it affects the game's verisimilitude. It might seem like a small thing, but people are still complaining about it 30 years later. Fielding in the game is actually a bit of an improvement. Your players do a decent job of running under the ball themselves. They're not perfect, but considering how bad fielding is in most of these games, I'll take the small improvements where I can. Except... Sometimes the game just doesn't register that you've caught a pop fly. The batter will just keep running. The pitching in the game has similar sloppiness. The catcher's mitt gives you an indicator of where the ball's going to, and it's kind of disembodied from the catcher. Sometimes there will be pitches that are well away from the plate that are called as strikes. It's especially bad on the inside. And it's not like you can reposition your batter either. They're stuck in place. You can adjust the height of the swing, but not how far in or out you are. Then we reach the second most infamous bug. If a player hits a foul ball, then the next pitch will always be registered as a strike, regardless of where it goes. So if you hit a foul ball, always swing at the next pitch because it'll always be a strike for you. The most infamous bug of all is how some of the characters are marked as sluggers, one player on each team. And in the initial release of Moero Pro Yaku, where the ball went for their hits was determined solely by where the ball struck the bat. And as a consequence of this, those players could bunt and send the ball flying out of the park. It's not a proper bunt, just a halfway swing. If you press B while batting, you go into a proper bunt stance and you won't get the same effect. It doesn't happen every time. In fact, what I had to do was set up two player matches 
and just try over and over again, but I got it to work. There's one more enormous downside to Moreo Pro Yaku. The game is slow. You have to watch batters go up to the batting box, the team's changing position. If you switch out a player, you get a little cutscene of it. It takes about 45 minutes to play a game. And to beat the game, you have to win 80 games in a 132 game season. Even if you master the art of pitching exactly where the game will call a strike even though it's unhittable, you're still looking at playing for over four complete games in order to complete a season. Mike. So Moreo Pro Yaku is a visually pleasant, but horribly playing game. Mike. And just in case you think game reviewers might have been different 30 years ago, it got extremely high scores in reviews from before its release. The vast quantities of copies sold of Moreo Pro Yaku, and the extreme undesirability of it, has resulted in something a bit weird. It's become a bit of a meme in Japanese retro game circles to get as many copies of Moreo Pro Yaku as you can and build things out of them. In a weird way, I actually think the bugs make Moreo Pro Yaku a bit more interesting than most Famicom baseball games. At least when you're playing this one, you can do crazy things. It's still not good, and you're still playing Famicom baseball, but at least it's notable.